Let's go ahead and try a wheel and axle problem. Let's say we are asked to shut off this valve. We need to turn this wheel to shut off the valve. And so let's start by drawing ourselves a wheel. And then let's add an axle in the center. And then right in the middle, let's add a sensor point or some fulcrum. And let's draw on an imaginary line to apply our forces. And let's say that the force it actually takes to shut off the valve, so the force resistance, is 500 pounds. And so let's label that as the force resistance. And let's say we don't know what the effort force would be. But the radius of our wheel, so from one end to the other, so we say from the center to the edge of our wheel is 9 inches and the radius of our axle is four inches. Well then I have two questions for you. The first one is what would be the mechanical advantage? And the second question is what would be the ideal effort force? And so let's start with the mechanical advantage. And since we're given two distances, we can use our IMADIR equation. Our IMA is equal to our DE divided by our DR. And we know what our distance effort and our distance resistance are. Our distance effort is going to be the distance from our center to our effort force. So this will be our distance effort. And this four inches will represent our distance resistance. And so we can say our distance effort is nine and our distance resistance is four inches and we know inches cancel out. And so if we pull out our handy dandy calculator, we can just say nine divided by four, and we get an IMA of 2.25. Now, as for our ideal effort force, we can go ahead and use our ideal effort force equation. And let me just move that down just a little bit so we can separate our two equations. But our ideal effort force equation says our IMA is equal to our AMA. And if this is true, we can go ahead and assume that our DE divided by our DR is equal to our FR over our FE, or our DEERS are free equation. And we know our DE over our DR, that hasn't changed. That is still 9 inches over 4 inches. So we can set that equal to our force resistance, or 500 pounds, divided by our ideal effort force. And to solve for this, let's just cross multiply and divide. And we can say 4 inches multiplied by 500 pounds divided by 9 inches is equal to our ideal effort force. And then actually, let me just slide this over just a little bit so we have some room to write our final answer. But to figure this out, let's plug this into our handy dandy calculator. I'm going to hit the numerator over denominator button, and I'm going to say 4 times 500 on top, and then on bottom I'm just going to put 9, and what do we get? We get 2,000 over 9. If you ever get a fraction like this, you can just hit this conversion button, and it says 222.2 repeating. And of course, we see that inches cancels out, and so we know our effort force is going to be in pounds, and we have 222.2 pounds, which is considerably less than 500 pounds. But what if we're still not strong enough to turn 222 pounds? Well, there's actually a way we can cheat here. My grandpa, when I was a kid, introduced me to what's called a cheater pipe. And what a cheater pipe is, is basically you add on to the end of whatever you're trying to rotate an extra length of leverage. And so we call this a valve wrench. You attach it to the end and you can effectively apply your effort force further out. So instead of applying it here at the end of your wheel, you would apply it here at the end of your valve wrench or this cheater pipe. And so let's extend out this line a little bit further and let's apply a new effort force. And so we'll call this our force C for cheater pipe. 
And let's say that this wrench is 11 inches long. And so we'd add 11 more inches to this nine inches already. So we can extend this out and we can say this entire radial distance is 20 inches. And so we'll call this our distance for our cheater pipe. So then what would be our new effort force for our new wheel and axle system with our effort applied to this cheater pipe? Well, we can still assume our ideal effort force equation, but our distance effort has changed. We can now say our distance effort is 20 inches. But the distance resistance hasn't changed if we attach this valve wrench. That valve is still the same radius, so we can still say that that is 4 inches. And the force resistance it would take to turn this valve of 500 pounds hasn't changed. And so we can keep that the same. 500 pounds is still our force resistance. But now we have a new ideal effort force, our FC. And so to figure this out, we can cross multiply and divide. And what do we get? We say still four inches times 500 pounds on top divided by our new distance effort of 20 inches. And we can set that equal to our force applied to our cheater pipe in an ideal world. So we pull out our handy dandy calculator and I'll say four times 500 divided by 20 and now we have a new effort force of only 100 pounds if we applied it to our cheater pipe or our valve wrench which would be considerably less force than this 222 pounds we'd have to apply to the wheel directly of course the disadvantage would be our force would have to travel a much farther distance to get this job done than if we just applied the force to the wheel itself. And the distance disadvantage always comes with a force advantage. We have a much smaller force, 100 pounds. That is the advantage. And we can actually calculate out what that new mechanical advantage is. And so we can say our IMA for our cheater pipe, so I'll call that IMA C, is equal to DE over DR, where we just said that the DE over DR for this system was 20 over 4, so we can rewrite that as 20 inches divided by 4 inches. And of course, hopefully you don't need a calculator for this. Inches cancels out, and 20 divided by 4 is simply an IMA of 5, which is a much bigger advantage. It's more than twice as much as the mechanical advantage we got before of just the wheel with 2.25.